to her. So myself, Mrs. Shintil Kamri, HOD and Associate Professor from the Department Committee Health Nursing. Today I am going to discuss about the health planning in India. Okay, so prior we should know what is health planning and why we should have the health planning in India. So to run the proper health or we can say to make the available resources for the community people at the grassroots level we should have proper planning. Okay, so what the definition says is national health planning has been defined as the orderly process of defining community health problems, identifying unmet needs and surveying the resources to meet them, establishing priority goals that are realistic and feasible and projecting administrative action to accomplish the purpose of the proposed program. Okay, what it says, so it is an orderly process. It means it has some specific steps and when we see the orderly process is defining the community in form of health problems, identifying unmet needs and surveying the resources to meet them. So what is the goal here and what is the purpose to help or to provide the health care to all the community people. Now the first step we we'll see what the definition says here itself we can see that defining community health problems. So first we have to find out what are the health problems we are facing and what are the Second, and then unmet needs, identifying unmet needs. So what are these unmet needs? Take an example of population stabilization. Now since 1951, we have the first five-year plan. We have started in India, the first five-year plan. And then the uh, one goal was, the aim was to have the population stabilization. Now, till now, it is, we can say, after the national health policy in India, 1983, then when it was revised in 2020 or 20, 2002 and then we can see here that that problem is still unmet. Okay, So we have to find the unmet needs and survey the resources to meet them. So once we come to know what are the needs which are unmet and then what are the resources available, we have to survey that and then we will have to plan the further health planning or the her, further we can say the health planning in form of national health policies, uh, national health programs, eradication programs and all, both for communicable and non-communicable in such way. So after when we have the unmet needs and all, we have to establish priority goals. We have to find, we have to have the realistic goals which will be priority wise and then which are feasible and projecting administrative action to accomplish the purpose of the proposed program. So whatever the program we are planning in India, so what we can do is prior we have to have the orderly process, we have to survey the community, find the unmet needs and then establish the priority goals. And only the goal or the purpose is to have the, to provide the health care in India. Objectives of health planning in India, first is the most that is to improve the health services. So in the definition itself we have seen that we have to find out the unmet needs and then set the priorities or set the objectives. So why we should have this proper uh, surveying and all to find or to have the, to improve the health services in India. So in uh, health planning, whatever the national health policies are there, we cannot uh, Completely, we cannot eradicate all the uh, things or we cannot stop that program, but we can revise that program in the form to improve the health services. And the second goal is to meet the health needs and demands of people. So, meet the health needs and demands of the people. Already, definition says we have to find the what are the unmet needs, yes, and the second is demands of the people. Now what is the demand of the people is nothing but whatever the care is being provided should be easily accessible, attainable and affordable. Three A's. Okay, so very important is that demands of the people also we have to look into and why we are forming the health plan okay, or we are planning some program. So these are the two main objectives where we have seen 
First is to improve the health services which is available at present and to meet the health needs and demands of the people. Now process of health planning. It is what we have seen in the definition, it is an orderly process. So there are some process, there are steps in health planning in India. We we'll see one by one. Step one, analysis of the health situation. So what is the present health situation? We have to analyze that. Now what we have to do in this step? We have to do the collection, assessment and the interpretation. Now we will see one by one what exactly are the prerequisites in this step. Essential requirements in this step are First is we have to collect the data. We have said collection that is collect the data of the population, its age and the sex structure. How many male, females are there? What is the population? How much population is there? The age of the population and the sex structure. Then the statistics. For example, maternal morbidities, risk factors of the pregnancy, by race, ethnicity, etc. So here by we will have the data. So that is called as a statistic, which is in number form. We can analyze it. Next is epidemiology and geographical distribution of disease. So what is the frequency of the disease at present? Now we can take an example of COVID-19. So that time, what was the analysis done was how much the population is affected, what is the frequency of that disease, what is the distribution of that specific disease. It is geographically. So like for example, what is in Maharashtra, in India and then the, we can compare with the other countries. That is global. Then availability of medical care facilities. So when we say that everyone till the grassroots level we should provide the health care. So we should know first what are the medical facilities, care facilities available in India. So whether it is in rural areas, whether in the urban areas, so everywhere we should have the survey done and we should find out what are the medical care facilities available. How much sub-centers are there, whether they are the sub-centers uh, which are providing for the 3000 to 5000 population, whether they are appropriate, we, uh, we can provide the care to the, uh, in the village level and then what are the, how many PACs are there, community health centers are there, etc. Then technical manpower. Now this is again very important essential requirement in the first step that is analysis of the data. So why we should have technical manpower? So technical means the health personnel should be trained, qualified and should have the updated skills. Okay. So everyone like uh, the staffs, uh, whether it is in government or in the private area, we have seen that there are uh, many conferences, workshops held. Also we can see, uh, see the training, the st uh, staffs are sent for the training purpose. Now why it is? So that we should have the technical manpower. So technical itself it says the staff health care personnel should be trained, skilled and should have the up to date knowledge. Now that also analysis we should do. We should do the survey in each area all over India we have to do the survey find out where, how much technical manpower are there. Why? Because when we plan for the uh, health care programs any national health programs, so we should know how, what are the availabilities of the technical manpower or the health personnel. Then training facility. Now when we say technical manpower, then we should have the training facilities available. It differs now in the private government sectors, uh, public sectors and all it differs, but there should be the availability of training facilities where we can have the tech, more and more technical manpower. Then attitude and beliefs of the population. Now, when we provide the healthcare, now when we see, uh, when we take an example of the COVID vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine, so that time the we have to first do the survey. We have to find out how many uh, first we when the situation where we we have survey or we have we know that prior when the first introduction was done about the COVID-19 vaccine, we have seen that a few people have taken the. Uh, vaccine 
Okay, why it works? Uh, because of the attitudes and beliefs of the uh, side effects, okay, of the uh, COVID-19 vaccine, etc. So that is our duty as a healthcare personnel. They have to explain the in detail of, and remove the, what are the attitudes, find out the attitudes and beliefs of the people, and then work on that. So the population will be benefited. So step one, what we have seen is analysis of the health situation where we have seen there are three important stages that is collection of the data, assessment of the health situation and interpretation of the data. So this is the essential requirement for this day is we should know the population, its age and sex structure. Second, statistic, we should have the data, collect the data. Then epidemiology and geographical distribution, when we have the disease, we have to see the spread and the distribution of the disease, frequency of the disease. We have to see, survey the medical care facilities available, what are, how many technical manpower are there and what are, how many training facilities are there to have the technical manpower and the last is attitudes and beliefs of the people. Now the state second is to have the establishment of objectives and goals. Now here in the definition, first we have seen, find out or we have to find out the unmet needs. Now for that, we have seen the first day, we have do the, we, uh, we'll do the survey and then collect the data, interpret the data. Second step now, when we have the data in our hand, we have to set the objectives accordingly. Then why we should have these objectives and goals? First is to guide efforts. Now guide efforts of whom the people or the health personnel who have collected the data, done the survey, find out the, what are the health needs from the community. So we have to guide their efforts. Second is established at all levels. At all levels is nothing but a sub-center, we can see the primary health care center, village level, then block level, taluka level, district level, etc. So it should be established at all levels. It may be for short term and long term or long term. Okay, so short term, we can take an example of five year plans, which is for plan for five years. And uh, first five year plan in 1951 was started after the independence, okay, by the health commission or health planning commission in India. Now, this is short term for five years. Now, long term example we can take as the population stabilization. Now, the target is by 2045, the population will be stabilized. Okay, so that is the now current for the long term. So, these are the, uh, we can see what, why it is important to have the objective and goals in health planning area. First is to guide efforts established, guide efforts established at all levels and can be short term or long term. Step 3 in under health planning in India, assessment of the resources. So now when we have, we are the, when we come to know what are the health needs in the community, then we set up the written or we can say the objectives are there, goals are there. The third is assessment of the resources. Now what we have under these resources are what is the manpower, money, material available, skills, knowledge and techniques. So manpower we should have because manpower we already have said technical manpower, money that is budgeting for uh, healthcare purposes or to plan for the health programs in India. Then what are the materials or equipments we can see? The skills that is technical manpower and knowledge in again which comes under health personnel. Step four. This is fixing priorities. Now when we see, we uh, identify what are the resources available, then we have to set the or fix the priorities. For which group or what is the first priority we have to keep to plan the health programs. So first is 
at most that attention is paid to financial constraints that is what are the any barriers financial constraint the second is morbidity and morbidity data we already have said that for analysis we should have in our hand the statistical data then disease which can be prevented at low cost so here we have to see prevented at low cost that we have to come to know first then that priority we have to give at the low cost which means disease can be prevented and saving the lives of younger people in both in urban and rural area we can see the uh, saving the younger people is also the priority given and the political and community interest and pressure so that is we should have the this gives an example of intersectoral coordination so here we should have the political interest also community participation also and then we can have the proper planning okay so the priority is given to all these things that is what is financial or budget plan then morbidity and mortality rate data disease which can be prevented at low cost saving the lives of younger people and political and community interest or pressure so this is intersectoral coordination we should have then step 5 okay. now here we have in step 5 write up of formulated plan so whenever with the plan is been plan actual it should be in written form or it should be formulated in the written form step 6 is programming and implementation now here we are going to implement that plan actual so here what we need these are the things we need in this step first is define the rules roles and tasks roles and task of the health personnel who will perform what uh, job responsibility so that should be defined actually the roles and tasks should be uh, planned and second is the selection and training motivation and supervision of the manpower involved now whenever the program is been implemented at that time we should do this proper selection of the staff training should be given motivate the staff and supervise the manpower those who are involved in the health planning programs then organize and communicate organization and communication in this we should have a proper organization and proper communication okay so that is very important to have the proper running or smooth running of the program the communication should be proper the efficiency of individual institutions such as hospitals and healthcare centers so individual institutions so when we talk about the providing the healthcare here we should know first how many institutions are involved in providing the healthcare all the sectors private and public health sectors so such as hospital and healthcare centers and now we have seen under the nrhm the public private partnership is the best example we can see here so there is a participation collaboration of the different sectors and we can have the efficiency of the institution which are involving in the health plan in india then step 7 monitoring now here in previous slide we have seen that monitoring should be done that is supervise the staffs and the monitoring is very important why because whether the program whichever is planned by the government is been running smoothly so that monitoring is very important and now in at the pc level we have seen that medical officers they monitor they supervise the their staffs and step 8 is evaluation so this is the last step evaluation where we are going to observe we are going to see that whether whatever the objectives are set that is been achieved or not okay so this is very important step monitoring is done then uh, by the senior staff 
of the health personnel then again evaluation is done whatever the objectives are there we have to uh, do the evaluation and then find out whether the goals are achieved or not and why we need this for the further planning again if we are not um, the goals are not achieved then again we have to go for the first step that is analysis of the data collect the data interpret the data then set the objectives find out the training facilities find out the technical manpower and then monitoring and evaluation again okay. so that is very important uh, these are the steps under the health planning in india what we have seen now so we have seen what is national health planning uh, which is defined which is orderly process of identifying unmet needs problems serving the resources available establishing priority goals and then whatever the feasible and projecting administrative level we can do we have to perform it implement that to achieve the proposed program then we have seen the what are the objectives of the health planning then we have seen the process which includes the first step that is analysis of the health situation step 2 is establishing the objectives and goals then step 3 assessment of the resources available step 4 fixing the priorities and the more attention is given to this following thing that is financial constraint data available uh, the disease which can be prevented at low cost then saving the lives of the younger people and what the political and community interest and pressure then step 5 write up of the formulated plan should be there and then step 6 programming actual implementation of this program step 7 monitoring of the staffs step 8 evaluation so here we are going to see whether the objectives are been achieved or not not achieved and we need some points to be improved again we have to do the survey find out the unmet needs set up the priorities and implement the program okay so here we have seen what are the steps of health planning in india now when we see after the independence one committee health planning committee uh, board committee was the first committee which has done or which has taken the active part and uh, the committee committee is also called as health survey and development committee now why it is because they have done the survey since 1943 under the uh, supervision or guidance of sir joseph board in 1943 the uh, this board committee was established and from the onwards they have done the survey what was the existing situation of that uh, period or that years and then after that independence in 1948 they have submitted the report they have given some recommendations and so they have played a vital role in health planning in india so many committees have come and it is very important to discuss now when we say health planning in india we have to start from first how the health planning in india was done so first we start with there are many components or we can say many things first is health care committees of india which help with health planning in india second is the national health program another is five year plans then uh, we can see about the health policies national rural health missions etc so now we are going to discuss about health planning or health committees of india now first is board committee it was constituted by pre independent government of india under sir joseph william board he was indian civil servant the committee which formed in 1943 called as health planning and development committee and supervision that time okay 1943 before independence the uh, it was called as health planning and development committee so they have done this survey we'll see objectives of this health committee was to survey the existing position to survey the existing 
position existing position mean it is from 1943 so what was that existing position was the first object objective of that to do the survey find out the existing position regarding the health condition and health organization in the country there are two aspects their objective was first is find out the health conditions of the people and second is what is the proper organization what is the infrastructure available to provide the health care in the country and the second to make recommendations for the future development so whatever the data we have already seen discussed what are the states of health planning so once they get the data so what they have done they have given some recommendations for future planning or future development the recommendations were integration of preventive and curative services at all administrative levels that means starting from the grassroots level village level taluka level we can say district level here everywhere there should be integration of preventive and curative services available made available at that time second the committee visualized the development of primary health centers in two stages this is very important recommendation they have done and we can if we tally this so many of per percent we are implementing the same thing so it was in the form of short term major and long term major in short term plan they have said they have recommended to be the plan to be implemented within 5 to 10 years and best example we can see first five year plan was started in 1951 to 1956 so it should be the short term plan should be only for 5 to 10 years each primary health center in the rural, rural area to cater a population of 40000 now nowadays existing condition or we can see one psc looks after 30 to 40000 population in the plain area okay so this is now correct data we can see or the situation existing situation second is secondary health center that we can say a rural hospital to serve as a supervisory coordinating and referral institution so whatever the rural hospitals are available after the primary health center so there should be a proper referral system proper coordination should be there at all the levels administrative levels that is when we see the uh, referral system sub center to the primary health center to the district hospital so here the proper coordination should be there supervisory should be done properly third next is for each psc to medical officer now here they have planned a staffing pattern so we have uh, say in the prior uh, previous slide we have seen that it was for existing situation existing uh, situation before the independence in india so now they have planned, uh, said that two medical officers should be there now at present we have one medical officer four public health nurses one nurse four midwives four trained guides and 15 class four employees now all together now this we have 15 employees or staff overall staffing pattern of the psc so this was the requirement at that existing situation in india long term plan now here in the long term plan uh, board committee they have recommended the healthcare system in three tiers the first tier it says primary health units should have 75 it should be 75 bedded hospital for each 10000 to 20000 population that means around about 20000 population they should look after with staff of six medical officer six public health nurses two sanitary inspectors two health assistants and other supportive staffs okay so the idea was first tier it should be uh, looking after that is a one psc should look after 10000 to 20000 population it should be 75 bedded at present we have 10 to 15 bedded hospital or primary health care center second second tier is say 650 bedded regional health unit that is rural hospital unit to serve as a referral center for 30 to 40 primary health units so here we can see in the second tier it is say 650 now we'll see 75 bedded the psc should be then 650 the rural hospital which is the mediator we can see the referral unit we can call it as a referral unit and the third tier district hospital with 2500 bed that is district hospital okay so two 
main recommendations given by board committee the objective was to find out the existing situation at that time and then they have given the recommendations recommendations in two forms that is short term plan and a long term in the short term they have planned how the psc should be how many population they should cover and then how the rural hospital should act as a supervisory coordinated referral units and last is the staffing pattern in the long term they have said how the bed how the psc the rural hospital and the district hospital should serve how many population in the bed form it is psc for 75 they should serve with the 75 bed rhq with the 650 bed and the 2500 for the district hospitals second committee is which also has taken active participation under health planning mudhiya committee in 1962 it was constituted in 1959 by government of india under dr a lakshman swami mudhiya he was a vice chancellor of madras university the committee was called as health survey and planning committee why right? they also has done the survey and they have uh, participated and they have contributed in the health planning in india objectives of this committee to survey the progress made in the field of health since submission of the board committee's report so whatever the recommendations were given by board committee they have seen survey the progress progress made in the field of this uh, under the uh, joseph board committee whatever the report was there and they make recommendations for the future development and expansion of health services so first they have to have the key lessons or find out the progress made in the field of uh, health since submission of this board report committee report and then second is their recommendations after having the survey recommendations of mudhiya committee first is consolidation of first two five year plan consolidation of first two five year plans is that but have the uh, continuation of first five year plan with the second okay so that is two five year plans was consolidated made uh, communicated or made one strengthening of the district hospitals that is district at the district level the hospital was train, uh, the plan was to strengthen those hospital strengthen in the form of first is infrastructure second is technical manpower training facilities available and whatever the population was covered or looked after then regional organization and the district in charge of regional day to day and assisting assistant director so this post in the organizations were made regional charge of regional deputy and assistant director then plc not serve more than 40000 population same it was continued with the board committee recommendations that one plc should not serve more than 40000 population and then integration of medical and health services so more and more integration should be done that was the first foremost uh, objective of this committee to integrate the medical and health services available in india then chatta committee constituted in 1963 by government of india under dr m s chatta director general of health and dghs recommendations of this committee were by basic health worker that is phw for 10000 population now under nrhu nrhu has introduced ashas they look after 1000 population why the the motive was that or the aim was to provide the health services at the grassroots level so ashas were appointed are appointed for 1000 population who will be from the same community will know the same language and look after 24 hours for the population 1000 population so same thing the recommendations were one basic health worker for 10000 population then one bs bsw uh, basic health worker should visit house to house once in a month to implement malaria activities now that time the problem was about the communicable disease which is malaria so very important they have taken into consideration and the priority was given for malaria to do uh, look after the or implement the malaria program or the activities so they have given the job responsibility for this basic health worker to visit house to house that is do the home visiting find out malaria cases 
at that time and implement the or provide the strategies of the team. Then basic health worker to serve as multi-purpose health worker for family planning and vital statistics. So here the basic health worker should be as a multi-purpose health worker who is looking after the monetary activities who are uh, also helping the family planning and also collecting the data or which are you can say vital statistics, important statistics that is uh, the data needed for the health planning in India. So this basic health worker to serve as a multi-purpose health worker. Then family planning health assistants were to supervise three to four basic health workers. Now to supervise the basic health workers, family planning health assistant was appointed. So here he has to observe or supervise three to four basic health workers which is looking after multi-purpose health work. work. Next is Mukherjee Committee. Following the Central Family Planning Council meet at Madras, it was constituted in 1965, headed by Sri Mukherjee, Secretary Ministry of Health and Family Planning. We will see the recommendations. Recommendations of these committees were separate staff for the family planning program. Now here, whatever the job responsibilities was given for one basic health worker to look after multi-purpose work as a, to look after family planning, visit home to home for malaria activities and collect the vital statistics. Here in this committee, Mukherjee committee, the recommendations were given as separate family planning staff or uh, program for the, the staff should be allotted. The family planning assistants were to undertake family planning duties only. So when they are assisting or supervising the basic health worker, the family planning assistants have to undertake only the family planning duties only. Yes, to look only after the one activity that is family planning. The basic health workers were to be utilized for purposes other than family planning. So basic health worker should look after or be utilized for the collecting of vital statistics, looking after malaria activities apart from the family planning programs. Then the committee also recommended delinking the malaria activities from family planning. So here we can see under this committee, delinking was done. The program or you can see the these two activities were delinked, were made separated, family planning activities and the malaria activities. Then Jangalwala Committee, headed by in Srinagar and the Central Council of Health 1964. Dr. N. Jangalwala, Additional Director General of Health Services, has been the head of the committee and committee was also called as Committee on Integration of Health Services. Recommendations of this committee. First is integration from highest to lowest, lowest level in services. Integration from highest to lowest, that is from district to the providing the care, from central to the state, state to the district and to the at the grassroots village level. Then integration of preventive and curative services, same what was the, what is the health planning objective, that same integration of more and more preventive and curative services at each administrative level. And the third, integration of medical services and public health, that is rotation of personnel. So here the one thing important was implemented that is whatever the duties or the rotations were done of the health personnel in the public and the medical health services. The recommendations continue like unified cadre that is there should be uh, unity or we can say the uh, administrative level will go from highest to lowest level together. There should be a common scenario, recognition of extra qualification, equal pay for equal work, special pay for specialized work, no private practice and good service conditions. So we have seen here working together there should be intersectional coordination, unified cadre should be there. Then common scenario, okay, so according to the experience there should be a common scenario place. Then recognition of extra qualification. Extra qualification, so we can see there can be a post, then uh, the, uh, the, you know, uh, we can say the salary and all. So that is for extra, there should be done the recognition of extra qualification or higher qualification. Then equal pay for equal work. 
So whatever the work has been done, the equal pay should be given. That is the recommendation. Special pay for specialized work. So when we see, uh, take an example of Asha, we give the remuneration. The government gives the remuneration for one AMC mother when she escorts the AMC mother from the community for the institutional delivery. Then she gets the remuneration. So specialized work gets the specialized special pay. So that is called as in form of remuneration. One AMC mother she brings to the institutional delivery. So that is her uh, escorting the AMC mother. Then no private practice for the government doctors. So here there should be no practice. Private practice should be done for of the government. So those who are working in government should not have their own private practice. And then everywhere in the health sectors, in the administrative level, whether it is sub center, primary center, district hospital, there should be a good working service condition. Okay, so these were the recommendations of the health committee. So uh, today what we have seen is what is health planning in India, then what are the objectives of health planning in India, what are the steps actually, what are the steps taken. So everything we can see in the definition itself, it says order in process, then collect the data, plan the program, evaluate that program and then formalize that program. Okay. But today again we have discussed the major part which the health committees have played an important role in health planning in India. So we have seen first uh, board committee, then Mudiyar committee, Mukherjee committee, Chandrawala committee, Chadda committee who have played a vital role. They have done the survey, they have formed the unmet needs and then they have worked on the health planning. So uh, one thing we can do here when evaluation is done, we can uh, implement this program, we can further improve the health services. So it helps a lot and we know now any program it can be. So we have the, we know now the what are the objectives and how it is being implemented. Okay, so here we have completed today the topic health planning in India and uh, we have discussed the health committees in India which have helped in health planning. Thank you.